Hey guys, US Emily Point. Today's topic is uh, autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, let me remind you once again that I'm going to discuss uh, about uh, the topics which are important for US Emily Step 2 CK and US Emily Step 3. Right now, I'm not concentrating on Step 1. Uh, later in future, I will upload more videos on Step 1. Let me start with this. This is a very important topic. okay okay just I would like to define you what's autoimmune hepatitis is it is characterized by hepatocellular inflammation and necrosis and ultimately at last it leads to cirrhosis so in USMLE sometimes they will not give the exact history of autoimmune hepatitis uh, it can be hepatocellular inflammation in initial stages rather than a complete stage like a cirrhosis so this is very important so the symptoms the most the important symptoms what you need to remember for usmle is a fatigue anorexia weight loss behavioral changes very important and other important things what you need to look for is a systemic or cutaneous abnormalities epistaxis bleeding gums these can occur because of the prolonged prothrombin time due to liver malfunction okay in usmle remember they give the history of a fatigue fatigue usually confuses us whether it's an it could be a case of anemia there are many causes for the fatigue right so try to remember fatigue is the most common symptom and the upper abdominal discomfort mild pruritus anorexia myalgia diarrhea there are many features of this arthralgia skin rashes edema hirsutism amnuria and chest pain and so on the important findings i don't know whether it's a completely viable in the video it's a hematological findings i would like to tell you it's beneath the screen hematological findings these are very important findings you need to know about the autoimmune hepatitis there is a hypersplenism because in us they will ask you about the uh, the diagnosis in us step 3 they will give the diagnosis and they will ask you which of the following could be seen in this patient so hypersplenism autoimmune hemolytic anemia we remember autoimmune hemolytic anemia because this is autoimmune hepatitis and so autoimmune hemolytic anemia can be seen coombs positive hemolytic anemia pernicious and idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura eosinophilia remember about the eosinophilia very important point okay now the lab findings the important lab findings what you need to know is elevated serum aminotransferase both AST and ALT are elevated. Remember this both AST and ALT are elevated. There will be elevation of the IgG, okay, zero positive ANAs, SMAs, and LKM and anti liver cytosol 1. In this, what you need to remember is ANA and SMS, very important for your family, okay. Uh, in a 50% of patient, abnormal results on liver function tests include decreased albumin levels and prolonged prothrombin time. As the disease progresses, so you can see this, but initially sometimes in USMD they will not give the decreased level of albumins or a prolonged prothrombin time. What they will give the patient can to your office with normal findings and you find elevated ASTs, right? And ELTs. So this is what. Okay, the important point is the things which are normal in autoimmune hepatitis. Alkaline phosphatase is a normal level or near normal. Okay, bilirubin will be normal, right? So initially bilirubin will be normal but at last in the last stages it can elevate but the important points what you need to remember initially alkaline phosphatase and bilirubins are normal and remember these two points for your assembly very very important okay sms smooth muscle antibodies are present in 90 to 100 percent of patients so most of the patients will have this one lkm1 antibodies are present in 50 45 40 to 45 percent of patients so which is more frequently seen in the patient sms right so P and K are frequently present and IgG predominant polyclonal hyperglobulin C. liver biopsy is the most important diagnostic procedure so if you are given a question which if the following is the most accurate test to diagnose the autoimmune hepatitis it is going to be a liver biopsy remember very important point okay how do you treat it 
well the standard treatment is prednisone and azathioprine so it can be used alternatively alternatively we have budesonide and even a cyclosporine can be used i will later discuss later and transplant is the last procedure and the best procedure cyclosporine has a steroid sparing effect so if is there any contraindication for the use of the steroids in the patient so you can use a cyclosporine okay so i think okay usability point this is a lot so what you need to know about uh, autoimmune hepatitis is a diagnosis look for a patient normal patient for a regular follow-up with elevated ASTLT, normal alkaline phosphatase in the bilirubin very important points look for antibodies present okay this is the things what you need to look for and diagnose the disease lab findings based on the lab findings AST sorry uh, SMS LKM and ANAs right PNK remember this lab findings very important treatment well treatment is a prednisone and as well very important for a step 3 treatment okay if you in step 3 they give the diagnosis and you need to treat how do you treat okay what will be the best initial step remember about the best uh, what you call as uh, the best diagnostic procedure is liver biopsy okay thank you so much for watching my video please do subscribe to my channel and please let me know um, by liking and by commenting thank you so much